Hey, it's Randy from Voices, and I'm an audio producer with over a decade of studio experience. And today I'm gonna show you a few different vocal booth options that you can build at home, ranging from the budget friendly to the super expensive. So let's get into it. All right, we are here inside the cafeteria at Voices HQ, and I've chosen this area specifically for how bad this area sounds. We've got really hard concrete floors, concrete ceilings. We've got appliances down there that are making a ton of noise, so it's basically an audio guy's worst nightmare. And what we're gonna do today is go through four different vocal booth options to see if we can salvage a space like this to make it a little bit better to listen to. Now, the idea isn't to make it perfect. It's never gonna be perfect in a space like this, but hopefully we can do something that makes it a little bit better and a little bit easier to listen to. Okay, so we're gonna go over to vocal booth setup one. This is basically setting up at a table and I'm gonna use this as a control so we can hear how bad this space is. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. Okay, so we've got ourselves a control. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the first vocal booth, which is the DIY vocal booth setup, which is using two sofa cushions. Again, we said this is the DIY setup. It's not gonna look pretty, but it can actually be pretty effective. So I'm just gonna make a little cave here for myself. You can also add one to the top, that's gonna really help. And you can also add something soft because the desk is gonna be a reflective surface as well. So we're just trying to stop those reflections. Now, a space like this does a few different things. So one, it's gonna stop my voice from leaving this space, hitting other walls, bouncing off, and then coming back to the microphone. Of the sound that comes back to the microphone, it's gonna be absorbing it a couple of different times. So once going through, and once coming back. And another thing that this setup does is that when I'm sitting right here, my body is actually acting as a baffle that's stopping things from these walls coming back to the microphone. So you're basically forming a little cave around the microphone. One thing to note about a setup like this is that the thickness of this material is really gonna help. And also, there's a difference between closed cell and open cell foam. You wanna make sure you have open cell foam because closed cell doesn't absorb sound. The absorption coefficient is nowhere near as high as the open cell. So not all foam is created equal, make sure you get the right stuff to absorb your sound. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. Something to note with a setup like this is that this is not doing anything for any external sounds. If my colleague down the hallway coughs or a police car goes by, you're gonna hear it in a setup like this. So really this is just to help with some of the reflections in the space, but it's not gonna do anything for fan noise, helicopters, you name it. What is great though, is that a setup like this costs you a whopping zero dollars. Pretty sweet. Next, we're gonna move over to a PVC and moving blanket sort of design. So this is good for a setup that's a little bit more permanent. It's not completely permanent, but definitely something that you could put up in a bedroom. Pretty easy to set up and take down over and over. Now, what we really wanna pay attention to is the thickness of the moving blanket. So in a setup like this, we're actually trading some of the thickness. I mean, the sofa cushions that we used prior were thicker than this, so they're doing a bit of a better job, but this is more comfortable. You can stand in here. So my recommendation is to double or triple down on the moving blankets on the outside. It's really gonna help isolate some of that sound. So let's go inside and take a listen. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. All right. Now, if you wanna see a build on a booth like this, check out our last video that we published, how to build a PVC vocal booth. We went to the hardware store, got all the parts, and assembled this in that video. So definitely check that out. I will link to it up here. So in both of these setups, we've learned that they do a pretty good job for sound treatment, but they definitely don't sound proof. There's a really big difference between sound treatment and sound proofing. If you have ambient noise, if you know there's gonna be traffic going by, you live in a busy neighborhood, or you have a loud HVAC system in your apartment building or something like that, you're gonna need sound proofing. To really properly soundproof your space, you need to completely decouple your space from the surrounding environment, which basically means you need to build a room within a room that's not touching the outside room at all, so that sympathetic vibrations don't transmit through the walls. You also need much thicker walls with a variety of materials to help absorb different frequencies as they come in. Plus it needs to be airtight, but it also needs to have ventilation so that you can you know, breathe and stuff. It's really not that convenient. So then what is the next step up beyond something like a PVC vocal booth? What's the next step up in soundproofing and sound treatment? Well, we have two options. One is that we can build something that's in a permanent space in a quiet spot in our house. This is gonna require building materials, extra drywall, green glue, passive absorption, base traps, carpeting, soft surfaces, weather stripping underneath the doorways, 
it's gotta be completely airtight. Or we can purchase a ready to assemble vocal booth system like a Studio Bricks or a Whisper Room. Now this booth behind me right now is a Studio Bricks isolation booth, and this is a fully sound treated space with up to 45 decibels of sound proofing as well. So it's fantastic for both sound isolation, stopping those external sounds from coming in, as well as sound treatment on the inside with all of the acoustic paneling. This is gonna help with the reflections and the reverberations within the space. But let's take a listen to how this sounds when I close this door. So right now, you're still listening to the same microphone. This is a lavalier microphone that's on my shirt, and you can hear just how isolating this space is. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. So let's take a listen to the example inside the Studio Bricks, and then we're gonna compare that against the other options that we've recorded previously. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. Since 2005, the biggest and most beloved brands have trusted voices to help them find professional voice talent to bring their projects to life. Now, if you wanna build a PVC vocal booth like the one that you saw in this video, check out this video right here. We go over the entire buying list and the assembly and the testing so you can see if it's the right vocal booth for your setup. As always, happy auditioning, and we'll see you in the next one.